first of all tell us what is a habit coach all of us want to make some change you know there's always something that we want to tweak you have to start small and then grow with it yeah. as the habit coach the working title for this book mm-hmm. in my mind was a practical guide to habits in the book i make a distinction between habits routines and rituals the kind of person that i am before i do anything i want to learn about it completely so i think some of the people that are the hardest to work with are people who in their mind have decided they don't have time right and i keep telling people that it is not necessarily time it is intention Welcome to the Book Nerds podcast and a super interesting guest on the podcast today. Uh, we have with us Ashdin Doctor all the way from Bombay. We are shooting in Delhi at Kunzum Jor Bag and uh, your book has come out. Correct. And your debut book Change Your Habits, Change Your Life and uh, you know it's I read it. It's incredible. Thank you. And everybody who reads the book and it's not just a plug in plug everybody who reads the book will somewhat kind of make incremental changes and try to change their life and i suppose that was the purpose and i think you have done a great job congratulations thank you so much all. you are a podcaster yourself Correct. so forgive me if i do you know <laughs> i i make mistakes okay? i had a thousand podcast to practice on so don't worry <laughs> it all I happens i know so guys there's a podcast and it's by the same name it's called the habit coach podcast the habit coach podcast so uh, ashdin is a habit coach and um, first of all tell us what is a habit coach because not many people understand it you know kya karna hai bro i can i can build up on my habits i can change them where do you come in uh, where where did this name come from uh, what's happening there yeah. so it's very interesting you know when i say a habit coach people normally say that i've heard of life coach i've heard of fitness mm. coach mm. what is a habit coach mm. so that's where i normally start from and i say mm. that see what i learned was that people want to make changes in their life mm. all of us want to make some change you know there's always something that we want to tweak mm. you want to bring some badlav mm. however we start mm. then we fail mm. and then we start and then mm. we fail mm. and we never actually end up making that change yeah. now two things happen one is that first belief system that i can't do it mm. you know i can't do it then the second part which is then i'm not going going to try mm. so these two stop all change from taking place mm. and i started observing this 5 years ago 6 years ago before i started habit coaching mm. and uh, i realized that when i was I'm, when i was making a change in my life mm. I wasn't necessarily the most motivated. Mm. I wasn't necessarily the most disciplined person. Mm. But what I realized I did well was I realized I could make those small changes consistently. Mm. Okay. And I said that is there a way to teach people how mm. to make these small changes consistently because mm. if you make something consistently over mm. a period of time yeah. it's all going to accumulate into something big. And that is the way to start thinking about mm. habits. Mm. and this is exactly how i started this entire category called habit coaching so when mm-hmm. i started if you searched for habit coach you got the coaching habit which is another book oh, that yes, exists yes yes right? yes you never found anything called the habit coach so there's that, there's it's a new category there completely yeah. new category yeah. the word didn't exist only so mm-hmm. habitcoach.com was available okay. all of that everything that. was sorted ah, so <laughs> habit coach is trademarked by me so matlab ah. so we realize that this is something that that needs attention on yeah. and that's where habit coaching yeah. started from so i think in the book uh, in the introduction itself you tell everybody like what happened i i mean i would call it a aha moment but it was not exactly that way uh, you uh, had an experience and uh, what happened exactly and tell us a bit about that so i start off the book by talking about my you can call it like hero journey you know like when ah. you go down to your rock bottom moment ah. and then you realize ki aha something needs to change mm-hmm. and all of us have gone through rock bottom moments in our times so for me it started off with so i i come from a business family right so straight out of college it was always you know ashtin you going to join the business i also wanted to join the business so it's interesting i start the chapter and, and the book talking about my story because i know people can relate to this aspect of it because we all go through what we have uh, called you know our rock bottom moments mm-hmm. when everything seems to go wrong for mm-hmm. us and uh, so i started from a family business and in the family business typically you know everyone's looking at you saying yeah. you know are you going to be as good as your parents what is your you know ameer baap ka beta yes. then you know that kind yes. of stuff yes. happens so i was always brought up with this mindset mm-hmm. of i have to be better than everyone mm-hmm. you know 
this type a mentality hmm. you know if there is no point winning why take part you know that was the way that yeah. i thought so as a result there was this one point when i was overworked hmm. because i was trying to set up this new business hmm. i was overstressed at home hmm. overstressed at work and all of it combined to form this one point where i collapsed on the floor okay where my health was out the window hmm. i was nice and tubby at that time okay i couldn't climb three flights of stairs hmm. you know it was that situation mm. and when i was sitting on that floor and obviously in fear mm. because i didn't know what was happening yeah there were these two parts of me one part was saying that you know congratulations aston you actually <laughs> crashed on the floor you did a good job <laughs> oh by working so hard and the other part which was obviously scared are you going to die mm. so that's when i decided that i need to make a change in my life and that is where this whole thing of understanding health came in and i gave myself obviously at that time of, i was a type a person mm-hmm. so i gave myself this thing of get a six pack ah you know like matlab when you think of getting fit that's the only thing you wash body yes, yes, and yes. all of that so i thought that chalo we'll start with this mm-hmm. and i immediately went and did all the things that everyone tells you to do you know start a diet mm-hmm. start doing one and a half hour workouts mm-hmm. you know endless cardio mm-hmm. and i realized i couldn't do any of that because i I firstly my body was not responding. Okay. But the second thing was it was too hard to do at that point of time. Till I discovered these small 4 minute workouts. They called okay. the Tabata workouts. Mm-hmm. Right? So 4 minutes anyone can do. Yes. So that's how I started. I said 4 minutes, 4 minutes, 4 minutes, chote mm-hmm. chote. Mm-hmm. And then it grew to something where I could actually sustain for 1 hour. Yeah. Right? Then my nutrition became important, then my yeah. sleep became important. Okay. And that's how that transformation took place. but i realized that you have to start small mm. and then grow with it yeah. as the habit grows you talk about you know starting small and mm. incremental changes i mean in some ways have worked for me as well over the past 2 years i suppose uh, so uh, give us an example you know because you are the habit coach and i'll come to the content making and everything the podcast later um, but uh, you know about that um, how does one kind of uh, do that so it's, it's like what we were discussing just before mm. we started recording mm. right like uh, you wanted to start eating early mm. right and mm. we were having ah, this discussion ah. i think it's a very good thing to share with the ah, listeners ah. about how you did it because mm. you started off by saying i wanted to eat at 8 o'clock so yes. now 8 o'clock was easy for you to yes. eat at manageable manageable yeah. not so yeah. hard then slowly mm. 8 o'clock become 7:45 mm. 7:30 mm-hmm. then slowly 7:30 become 7:15 7 o'clock you don't immediately start eating at 6 o'clock Mm-hmm. Like you don't have mm-hmm. a two-hour jump, yeah. and that is the key to this incremental change. Okay. It is whatever you can do comfortably, mm-hmm. not stressing your system out. Mm-hmm. And by system, I don't mean your body system. Yes, I mean the system of your life. Yes, right. Everything It, that comes together in that system. It's very hard. I mean, because we have been doing, and we'll go deeper into this conversation and whatever you have written in the book as well. It there are some things that we just say that okay, this is how it is. we need to do this this way only yeah. so it's very hard to break it um, so um, and it's not cool you know to say yeah. i made only 15 minutes early right ah. we think it's cool like you know two hours yeah, right. suddenly i started eating ah. and all and matlab drastic something drastic drastic becomes yeah. cool yeah. but cool is not sustainable hmm right that's why okay. it's cool but yeah. sustainable is something that you can do continuously and that yes. is why that small change yes. is important let's go to the book okay it's interesting because uh, uh, these books uh, you are uh, it's very important to document uh, such stuff and you are kind of the pioneer uh, in this uh, i've read atomic habits as well but I, i found it hard to kind of incorporate it in my life it was too technical for me Correct. and i like a story where i can kind of you know relate also mm-hmm. uh, so and when i see it um, um, the more clearer i see it the easier it is for me So, uh, tell us about the book. How did it come about? Uh, first of all, and uh, because you were on Instagram first, right? Instagram, so when it started. When it started, and and that the podcast. Then the podcast happened, and then the book, and then the book. Then the book. So the book, mm-hmm. I really wanted to know the making. Uh, how did it kind of you know kick start? So it's very interesting. So the working title for this book, mm-hmm. in my mind, mm-hmm. was a practical guide to habits. Okay. because like you said there are so many amazing books that talk about the theory yeah. you know the power of habits mm-hmm. is a classic book that talks mm-hmm. about you know the entire the loop the habit mm-hmm. loop atomic habits again yeah. fantastic and like you rightly said they are amazing in theory but however 
when you put them in practice, it becomes a little difficult to do. And this I noticed when I was working with my clients. Okay. Right. Mm. I never noticed any habit loop taking place. Mm. Right. I didn't notice those technical things taking place, but I noticed the lifestyle issues that appeared in their life. <laughs> you know, I think my daughter felt sick. I had to yeah. take care of them. Yeah. You know, I had to go for a wedding. Yeah. So you have to inculcate or you have to budget for all these things happening in life. Because right. we are not robots. Yeah. We are not technical. Yeah. Right. We are human beings, and mm. human beings have these kinds of issues taking place. Yeah. So I was saying, how do I practically? help people make this change from what i was doing with my clients and that was where the genesis of this book started yes and uh, lockdown happened mm. so in lockdown people started saying chalo what should we do yes. we'll write book yes. so that's exactly how <laughs> yes. for me also it started because i realized that um, we have a podcast that comes out 3 times a week mm. and for 3 times a week i was already writing 750 words mm. for each podcast mm-hmm. i was like if i'm writing 750 words mm. almost every other day mm. what if i write every single day 750 words ah. and that's how i can hmm. probably start a book hmm. and that's how the practice of writing a book happened okay. and the kind of person that i am hmm. before i do anything i want to learn about it completely hmm. so i finish reading some 3 4 books on the styles of writing by ah. different authors yep. what are their best practices and best habits Okay. And then yeah. I said, okay, chalo, this makes sense. I'm going to use it. This makes sense. I'm going to use it. Mm-hmm. So, for example, that 750 words was something that came from one author. Yeah. And the something else that another person said was never review your work as soon as you finish writing. Mm-hmm. So write, 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 write. Mm-hmm. Next day, review what you've written. You mentioned it earlier also, and uh, on writing. You correct. Said, no? Correct. By Stephen King. Stephen King. Yeah. It's great advice. By It's the amazing yeah. advice because mm-hmm. you get so stuck in the editing of what you've written that yeah. you never actually finish mm-hmm. what it is that you started. Yes. Yes. So that's how I actually put it down, and I had one place on the farm where I would sit every single day, looking out at my river mm-hmm. with my two dogs sitting down and typing. Oh, wonderful! This book. What so a setting! In case you want to know how this book was written, <laughs> greenery, river, and yes. two puppies there. That's so ideal, and we, we <laughs> our team is from Dune, and we love that. Right, <laughs> so I think so. That's why from Dune and Masuri, we have the most number of authors per kilometer. Oh, really? Yes, we have. So if I just came up with it, but it is true. This is like the <laughs> Hong Kong statistic: <laughs> most number of millionaires per kilometer. But like, I love like it. That. You know, you go to Masuri, you bump into Ruskin Bond, and then you bump into someone else. It's like that, and it, you know, uh, I'm glad that you wrote it. That sure, I need to place get a place in Masuri now. Yes, mm. you have to. Mm. Everybody needs to. <laughs> so yeah, uh, regarding the publishing, you know, it's uh, it's always a uh, easier to kind of you know just self publish because you already had a. kind of base and you just want you you could have just put out your content and it would have worked anyways so why go through the traditional route and how did that happen a little bit and then of course we we'll talk about other things lovely so like you rightly said i wanted to do the self publishing mm-hmm. thing for two reasons one is from a business buddhi point of view it mm-hmm. made no financial sense to mm-hmm. go with a publisher because the amount that you actually get as an author is yes zilch yeah right so you are mm-hmm. only doing it for the joy of putting your work out there mm-hmm. when you publish it on authors that's what i learned from yeah. this so i was all ready to yeah. go out and i read probably two books on how to do kindle publishing and all of that was okay ready in in the in the works mm-hmm. and friends of mine were saying no no ashtin you must get a publisher on board and the place where i was torn was this part i was like first time i'm venturing into this world mm-hmm. right i'd much rather have somebody hold hand mm-hmm. see so i obviously i got a writing coach and all yeah. of that to help me out then as a should i tell you the the story that's yeah. there in the yeah. in the book on how yeah, the it happened we won't give, be giving too many spoilers so this one is so this one this one is <laughs> in the acknowledgement so it's yes, fine yes yes right so i'm sitting at this um, restaurant in bombay it's called mm-hmm. soho house and mm-hmm. i was meeting a friend that's for breakfast that's a good one that's a very nice that's a very nice one soho house is lovely <laughs> lots of things good things happen in soho house you meet okay. lots of creative okay. people there so yes i was meeting a friend for breakfast and i and uh, One of my best friends, Cobra. Hmm. She pops in and she says, "Hey, Ashtin, how are you doing?" We all love have... sacred games. We all love sacred games. <laughs> you should have her on your podcast for her book. We should. No, nah, I'll, I'll set it up. Maybe she agrees. I'll set it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she loves <laughs> talking so about bad. it. Yeah. So she comes, she gives me a hug, and says, "Come, come, come! I want you to meet my publisher." Hmm. So I'm like, okay. So okay. then her publisher is sitting there, hmm. and from Harper Collins because her book mm-hmm. is also from Harper Collins. Hmm. and she looks up at me and says hey you're that habit doctor <laughs> so i was like correct habit coach ashdin doctor you mix the yes. two but perfectly fine it's, it's fine. fine 
and she is like yes 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 you've been wanting you to write a book for us will you write a book Wow. and i had just finished writing this manuscript mm. two weeks before yep. this breakfast happened mm. so i looked at her and said book is ready also, tell me when you want to publish they must have been like surprised they were surprised i was surprised also <laughs> so, i was like are you have a college to me you lick you lick it better already so it's it's like uh, you know, like no we i was like yeah yeah so then two days later mm. she, we we again met up and i made her read mm-hmm. the chapters mm-hmm. and stuff that i had put out mm. this is the first time anyone was reading yeah. it yeah it's it's amazing that that story is like uh, really awesome and you know <clears throat> in the book you talk about so many things and one needs to kind of read the book to uh, truly understand how does one change one's life um but you know you talk about uh, the habit train and that was something which was quite interesting for me uh, so would you like to tell people about it and yeah uh, so they understand you know how to kind of uh, set the ball rolling so as to say i love thinking of you know your life as visuals okay. you know if you can see a train going past mm-hmm. right there's an engine that is pulling along mm-hmm. these 16 different carriages mm-hmm. each of them weighs mm-hmm. so many tons mm-hmm. and it is all going so smoothly mm-hmm. now that is how you should think of your daily routines your daily life mm-hmm. going smoothly mm-hmm. one engine pulling everything along Mm-hmm. and that one engine typically is your main habit that pushes things so when you wake up in the morning what is the first thing that you do it probably mm-hmm. be the first habit that puts everything in motion maybe it's brushing your teeth that you do yeah. Yeah. maybe it's making your coffee mm-hmm. maybe it's sipping your water mm-hmm. so if you have that in place mm-hmm. one habit flows into the next and pulls mm-hmm. the other one along mm-hmm. and that pu- pulls the other one along as well and that is how you start thinking about your routines Right. So in the book I make a distinction between habits, routines and rituals. Mm. Right? So habits are and we haven't defined habits. So let me quickly define yes, habits. Yes, sure. Yes, surely. So the way that I like to think of habits are any actions mm. or thoughts mm. that are repeated at a set frequency. Okay? Cool. Actions tying shoelaces and actions. Mm-hmm. But what we don't realize is that habits are also our thoughts. Mm. So if you wake up in the morning and say life sucks, mm. that is a thought. Right? If you looking at oh this weather again is so bad it's, <laughs> the weather is the weather yeah correct it's not yeah. bad it's not good yes. it's the weather yeah. but it is your thought that is routine yeah. that is setting in that yeah. becomes a habit yes. so your so your habits are thoughts or actions mm-hmm. now when you have multiple thoughts or actions strung together mm-hmm. like a train mm-hmm. they become a routine okay and when you have an emotion attached to this routine it becomes a ritual Yeah. So, for example, my morning ritual is sitting down with my coffee, mm-hmm. reading a book, mm-hmm. etc., etc. Yeah. When that doesn't happen, I realize life is going to go for a toss. Yes. Right. That means an emotion yeah. has been put onto this yeah. routine. So that is the way to start thinking about this. And 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 yeah. if you want to make a change, routines are easier than rituals to change. Rituals right. because of the motion very difficult to change. And yes, this is an an entire section on it. Correct. Uh, you know, in the book. So, guys, I mean, you have to read it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll tell you. we won't tell you more but uh, you talk about frequency correct you know which is the key i suppose because you, when you break it down you know and this is something a lot of people are struggling with mm-hmm. and i'm glad that you have addressed it i don't want to get it wrong so i'll just read it off this uh the quote was that uh, the lesser the frequency the harder it is for habit formation so this is so you know the basics yeah and Now tell us more about this uh, about frequency. Why do you say this? So you can think of habits as practice. Okay. So the more you practice a particular thought or a mm-hmm. particular action, yeah. the stronger it becomes in the way that you actually end up doing it. Okay. Right? Now if I practice doing something every day, mm. I get stronger at it. Mm-hmm. If I practice doing something once a week, mm. once a fortnight, I cannot get that much of time into it like right? i'll go for cycling over the weekend Correct. or something like that there's not a necessary habit it's something that you uh-huh. do yeah it won't work also most of the time Correct. get it distracted you have to become very if you want to become very good at it you have to become you have to do it much more mm-hmm. frequently mm-hmm. but the the very cute aspect on it is for example we have 7 days in a week mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. normally we think of i will go work out monday wednesday friday mm-hmm. that means 3 out of 4 days you're mm-hmm. working out yeah. that means 4 out of 3 days you are mm-hmm. not So, yeah. which is the habit that's becoming stronger? Not working yes. out is becoming stronger because there are four days there. Working out is becoming it's weaker scientific. because it's, right? it, it just makes so much sense. It's basic maths. Yeah. So you just have to understand that ah, this is happening, mm-hmm. and what can I do yeah. about it? Yeah, it, that's amazing, you know. And uh, you know, so many people are struggling with fitness, and you know, 
give maybe a couple of uh, without naming people of course uh, some examples where you kind of thought okay this will be tough even for me you know to kind of pull this through and kind of work with the client or you know maybe somebody whom you are mentoring or something like that share an example maybe uh, you know so i think some of the people that are the hardest to work with are people who in their mind have decided they don't have time to do anything acha okay. you know they don't have time to do this. they don't have time to do thare ash then i want to make this change but i don't have time oh. right and i keep telling people that it is not necessarily time it is mm-hmm. intention mm-hmm. right just say it's not important to you 100% i won't make a change but okay. if you say it's important to you and then you say you don't have time not acceptable okay right so importance is the key thing here mm-hmm. so this person no 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 ash then mm-hmm. exercising is important for me mm-hmm. but i don't have time So I was like, okay, fine. Let's figure this out. And this gentleman was the owner of a very, very large business. Okay. And what we ended up doing was we ended up having his workout mm-hmm. at twelve thirty in the afternoon. Okay. Just before lunch. Okay. So in his office, mm-hmm. the trainer would come at twelve thirty mm-hmm. and do this workout, mm-hmm. and then he would go have his lunch, etc. Okay. And it and it just flowed seamlessly into the mm-hmm. day. because if he was doing going to do it in the morning there would be tons of excuses right here he's captive audience in his office there's no way that he can run away from it yes. <laughs> so it's going to happen yes. for sure yes. right and it wasn't one and a half hours of work mm-hmm. it was half an hour of work half mm-hmm. an hour you can take out yes right and it was work out and get straight into your business clothes and continue okay. it wasn't like i'm not going to work out so hard that i can, that i can't think after that i need to oh. go have a shower mm-hmm. so it was those kind of little little tweaks mm-hmm. that we made into his lifestyle that made this change it's that's wonderful and you know most of the people i meet have got this excuse and <clears throat> you know it is uh, especially people with gyms people donation of, to the gym yeah, how donation many donations to the gym, yes. to the gym have happened there are so many gyms have propped up and you know there are all sort of scenarios you mm. know so how do you kind of navigate through this because the client could be anyone there are different clients maybe somebody has got too much weight on them or something like that or maybe that i am sure that you would have encountered so many different people so how does one kind of you know segregate this because uh, not everybody is the same right i mean it it is Absolutely. a very unique problem every time so perhaps with an example or just like that you can you elaborate on that so i'll break it up into two categories mm-hmm. So there's one category of person that is not fit enough to start the routines that they want. Okay. Right. So if you are massively overweight, mm-hmm. if you've not been working out for six, mm-hmm. seven, eight years, ten mm-hmm. years, mm-hmm. if I suddenly tell you to go start doing a gym workout, it's very hard. Mm-hmm. Right. So one person is not ready for it. Okay. The other person is just bored to do it. Mm-hmm. Right. Because they don't find it interesting enough. Yes. So the way to handle these two is with the person who's not fit enough. Mm-hmm. You start by something as simple as a walk. before you have your breakfast okay. or after your dinner mm-hmm. right because that manages your glucose level so you will automatically start losing weight faster than walking yeah. randomly through the day so just the walk right walking yeah. is fantastic as a mm-hmm. habit the 10000 steps 8000 steps ignore a slow walk for mm-hmm. half an hour is all you need it's underrated also right very underrated but the problem is that actually yeah. the issue is mm-hmm. the issue comes when people say you have to do a brisk walk Mm. Right, tap mm. tap 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 tap. Yeah. But actually, the beneficial walk is when you do a very slow walk. Imagine if you're okay. walking with a three-year-old child. Mm-hmm. Just at the right pace. Just at a very slow pace, because oh. what's happening is that at that point of time, your body is actually holding up this your entire weight. Okay. Otherwise, you're using momentum. Mm-hmm. So when your body is holding right. up your entire weight, you are actually getting tired faster. This is a just myth, using momentum. A myth that have you, that has been busted right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Big whatever one. I have read till now, and there's uh, brisk walk, brisk walk, and all the content mm. it has got brisk walk in it. Uh, but thank you for that. No, my pleasure. <laughs> but, Cardiovascular pain, yeah. brisk walk. Okay. Losing fat, mm. slow walk. Okay. So you have to understand yeah. for which purpose it right. comes from. So one is that you, if you are not fit enough, at least start walking. Yeah. Right. Um, the second thing is that. you've just not found the activity that you enjoy okay so for example there is gym mm-hmm. there are running groups mm-hmm. if you want something more social there is crossfit if you want to do weights plus social yeah. then you have aerial yoga mm-hmm. right you have yoga classes mm-hmm. you have so much a variety of fitness things mm-hmm. that are there now that if you try everything you'll find mm-hmm. something that you possibly enjoy right right a friend of mine she hates going to the gym she mm-hmm. complains 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 
but now she has discovered this pole fitness class okay right so now she does pole fitness okay. to the point where she's put a pole in her house and she's doing it wow. from home and practicing and it's fun and it's fun and yeah. so the whole thing is that how do you manage to get that fun out of the work yeah. that you do yeah. and you know we talked talked about one myth you busted one hmm. um there are so many out there and a lot of companies there's a whole section like, on on myth busting in the book <laughs> and an entire section um Uh, some myths which you like really uh, they piss you off like you know why are people doing this just like you know and you maybe discovered them and tell us more about these myths that are happening the biggest one is the 21 day one so we ha- we can't <laughs> we, we can't do a habit talk about habits without the 21 yes, day thing we because can't. 21 days is thrown in your face every time you say habit mm-hmm. change mm-hmm. now in the book i obviously explain where the origin of the 21 days comes from yeah. but what's interesting is that never have i seen 21 days work in real life okay right because just think about it from this point of view say you have decided to drink 3 liters of water mm-hmm. per day mm-hmm. day 1 you had it day 2 you had it day 19 you've been having a 3 liters you're feeling feeling like you're on top of the world okay next day you have to drive to some place so you can't have those 3 liters of water mm-hmm. because otherwise you'll be stopping yeah. to go to the loo everywhere yeah. so now you've broken that Yes. 21 days thing now you mean yeah. that means yeah. you have to start from day 1 again yeah. but you did yeah. 19 days so well yes right so as a result that 21 days has gone for a toss Truly. you feel demotivated mm. you feel like oh my god yeah. i can't do this yeah. and that is where the problem comes in with this whole myth about 21 mm. days mm. that's the first problem the second issue is that when you're so oriented towards when is this habit going to become mine mm. you know when will it become a habit mm. instead of seeing that it's a journey mm. and i much rather enjoy the journey than just waiting for it to become a habit waiting for it to become a habit that it doesn't have to be goal oriented right the goal can be the journey right okay. i started yeah. off with 1 liter of water yeah. then i went to 1.5 <laughs> the journey is the ah, goal ah. but it is not that now i am a 3 liter drinker no right right the identity obviously will change but it yes. is not that i will be a 3 liter drinker in 21 days yes it might take you 30 days yeah. it might take you 60 days yeah. if you enjoy the process you have to be patient be. correct and but easier said than done patient uh, is not the thing you have to enjoy what enjoy it. see patience again comes with a negative connotation saying that it's going to be hard and you need to show patience ah correct truly show patience no ah. enjoy it's really hard hai kuch yaar you know makes sense if you're stuck in traffic yeah. you must might must yeah. you enjoy sitting in traffic if you're reading listening to book nerds podcast for example yes. correct yes. Yes. instead of gum, gumbling grumbling grumbling blowing the horn yes. so the same principle is can you enjoy this journey instead of just trying to yeah. end it fast yeah as in one aspect of the book which was super interesting was accountability partners and you know it it's quite interesting because you know i find it quite uh, nerve wracking to be honest because someone in my ear all the time you know telling me what to do i mean of course you're the habit coach uh, that's the whole purpose Correct. of uh, building habits but uh, how does it help first of all and um, what are the repercussions uh, how is that work for people i i really wanted to know that so accountability partner is a very important aspect from the point of view of saying that i am not alone in this journey hmm. you know hmm. very often we feel very alone mm-hmm. on our either weight loss journey hmm. you know you're trying to lose weight we've hmm. taken weight loss throughout the podcast as an example but it can work for your hmm. um, professional life as well hmm. but for example you're trying to lose weight and your parents or your family members are saying are are ek cake khao na hmm. right yeah. so you feel very alone at that point of hmm. time an accountability partner is not a principal of a school mm. right an accountability mm. partner is technically like your friend guiding you with saying that are listen you promised that you're going to do this today uh-huh. i can't see that you've done it are you yeah. planning on doing it yeah. you know what happened about it yesterday did you do it yesterday wow. so it's somebody that you are yes. for bad, bad, lack of a better word accountable for for the decision mm. that you've taken mm. right see like uh, when you make a habit mm-hmm. i would just valentines day has just passed by as we're recording this yeah. and uh, one of the habits was self love and i said yes. that i think habits itself are self love because mm. you're basically making a promise to yourself mm. that you need to keep yeah. right when you want to make a change yeah. in your life an accountability partner is n- nothing but somebody who's going to help you maintain that promise to yourself yeah. so not to think of a person mm. as somebody sitting on top of you mm. um professionally to give you an example so we started the habit coach podcast 5 mm-hmm. years ago right mm-hmm. and uh, i had never recorded a podcast in my life yeah. now suddenly 
I'm sitting with Kavita from IBM. Mm-hmm. We have this brainchild of how we're going to be recording mm-hmm. these podcasts. Mm-hmm. And she says, we will do three a week. And I'm like, okay. three podcasts a week? I was about to ask you that. <laughs> like, how? From zero to three? Like, yes, how? Yes. So, I was like, I don't think it will happen. Like, you know, mm-hmm. I know that I'll probably stop at some point of time. Mm-hmm. How can I sustain mm-hmm. something like mm-hmm. this, this hardcore? And uh, for me, the IBM team was mm-hmm. my accountability partner. Okay. Because I realized that they are also dependent on me, ah. right? So I have to be prepared. I have to come mm. and do my best for each of these episodes. Yes. And as a result, that kind of relationship was mm-hmm. formed. They were my accountability partner. Yeah. Sometimes I told them saying that, hey, wait, listen, ah. how many podcasts do we need, etc. Yes. To the fact that we've missed one episode in five years. Wow. And over a thousand episodes. Wow. Every other episode has gone out on time. And that one That's episode terrible. was missed because I think there was some big bank holiday that was happening for some. Uh, well, that happens. Days. I mean, you know. No, but it shouldn't. It should. Uh, the podcast <laughs> oh, was ready. It wasn't put out. So, okay. but that, uh, sore point. But that, yes. that is the <laughs> that is the way that your accountability partner should be. You know, you yes. have a good relationship yeah. with the person. And that's so uh, good for teams as well. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. I think, I think our team should also learn, for, starting from me, that you know, kind of this uh, you know churning out of content mm. and a lot of people are doing it you are doing it uh, tell us more about instagram how does it work uh, is there accountability how does it work because you are the habit coach where does your accountability come from for the podcast it's fine but for instagram yeah. you're doing doing videos how many videos per week so we decided to do 365 videos this year that means one video oh a day oh my gosh incredible i know it's so tell us the process. Plus five podcasts a week. So there oh. is that much content coming out. Okay, so yeah. that's a lot of That's content. a lot of content. So the way to think about it is to first start off by saying, okay, I'm going to do this. Yeah. Right now, after having spoken about saying, make it easy, make it easy. Mm-hmm. If I'm trying to scare you by saying I'm putting out this much content. Yeah. You need to realize that what happens is that you slowly grow into this stage. Mm. Right. I didn't start deciding to do 365 reels, five ep- podcasts a week mm. Mm. from zero. Mm. No, it slowly grew. Episode, the first entire two, three years of the Habit Coach were three episodes a week. Okay. Then during the lockdown, we said, now what do we do with the other two days? So no, we'll make two more podcasts. Mm. And then we got guests on board and then we started doing five podcasts a week. Wow. So it slowly grew along with yeah. that. Now this became easy for us to do mm. because we've gotten to the routine yes. of churning it out. Yeah. Right. There's also a ritual because now it's emotional saying that, you yeah. know, we have to do our best and yes. there's a little bit yes. put into it. Then we said, how can we take this to the next level? Mm. So YouTube has this format called Shorts mm. and Instagram has this format called Reels. Yes. Now, both of them are the sim- very similar ah. as a format. So we said, let's do a Tee Do Nishan kind of a thing. Yes. Let's record these vertical videos mm. every single day and mm. see what happens. Okay. So YouTube will grow, Instagram will grow. Parallelly. So yeah. that way we are smartly repurposing and using content. Great strategy. I mean, repurposing, of course, it's easier said than done. But, you know, you have to make the content anyways. Yeah. So like, <laughs> like editing a book is harder than writing it. Because yes. what to leave out, right? yes. what do you cut yes. out, that's yes. much harder that's than... A, that's a huge process. Yeah. Um, something which uh, I have kind of gone through as well, and everybody does. Uh, habits which we inherit. Hmm. And those have emotions uh, there. How do we kind of um, not get rid, uh, but I would say first to realize that understanding it. Yeah, hai. correct. Ye bhi important hai ki ye, this is what I have gotten now. This is the deal. And how do I kind of maintain it somehow, maybe, and then kind of uh, work smartly on it and, you know, in, uh, improvise. So, a bit about that. So this is a very interesting topic. And my entire TEDx talk was on this okay. topic, okay. which was understanding that you don't inherit just your genes, mm-hmm. but you inherit your habits as well. Mm-hmm. Because we always say, you know, in my genes, it is there. That means I will put on weight. I will get mm-hmm. diabetes. I will get this. Mm-hmm. But what we don't realize is that the habits that we inherited. Mm-hmm. So in the TEDx talk, I give the example of my grandmother. Mm-hmm. Now, my grandmother came from a family where at a drop of a hat, she would bake a cake. Mm-hmm. She would she would uh, make one big dish for me to, mm-hmm. you know, sweets. Mm-hmm. Ashton is sad, give him sweets. Ashton mm-hmm. is happy, celebrate with sweets. So sweets became a very important part of our life. Yeah. That I don't want to eat this, put sugar on it. I oh, eat wow. it. You know, it was that kind <laughs> of a mindset. Yes. And as a result, I just loved sweets. I would just co- yeah. eat copious amounts of sweet whenever I got an opportunity okay. to. 
and a large part of my weight gain was that because it oh. was stress eating emotion yes. eating like i told you i was going through a very difficult phase mm-hmm. and what was my comfort sugar sugar correct so then all that sugar was going into my system what all were you having let's be specific yeah. here cupcakes every day cupcakes every day there were muffins and okay. then there were chocolates to matlab like chana papri all over It's the like place so like ha <laughs> so like how you would go to eat like uh, you know that's like sing that's, chana uh, the same way it was chocolate oh like that ha, there was oh, the wow. tick, 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 okay. Tick, 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 okay so yeah it was a very different phase in life <laughs> so as a result you realize that these are the changes that you hmm. first re- say that oh i see this happening in my mom as well hmm. so maybe if my grandmother had it my mother had it maybe i was inherited this habit hmm. now how do i make sure that this inheritance ends with me hmm. right how do i make sure i don't pass this on to the next generation that's an amazing thought actually not many people think about it but we unknowingly kind of pass it on to someone like a thyroid maybe you know it is so easy to kind of pass on and it is happening Correct. you know it is the i think after diabetes it was it would be thyroid it can Perhaps. be a part of the way that you express yourself you mm-hmm. speak your mm-hmm. stress mm-hmm. and the kind of stress that you have in your family and the way mm-hmm. it's managed that mm-hmm. could lead to yeah for example a thyroid thing yeah. as yeah. as well but i don't know if much research has been done on the habit part of thyroid genetic part I, for sure there is I part i think it's a huge part yeah. i i I'm not. I mean, no, we are not medical. My surname experts. is doctor. My, ah. my, my profession is not. So please do because not take any very, medical advice from me. Yeah, it's a very sensitive uh, sort of domain. Exactly, But, yeah. because so much of that yeah. you don't know what mm-hmm. you're inheriting in that mm-hmm. format from your. Like I'll give you another very interesting inherited mm-hmm. habit, which is your relationship with money. Mm-hmm. If you're constantly being told, oh, you know, money doesn't grow on mm-hmm. trees. We don't have enough money. We don't have money. That is the habit that comes down to you. and then you pass that on to your child you'll say ha we don't have enough money you know yeah. so that inheritance of poverty or a yeah. poor mindset stays with the person wow never thought about it that way but it's actually there you it's what people call manifestation but it's a loose w- word i mean everybody uses it but perhaps it is that it's uh, the, it's the words that you keep telling yourself no yeah yeah it's it's interesting we have to kind of talk about the writing and reading habit especially because It's a booknerds podcast. We have to talk about reading. Uh, has it been uh, a client or someone who has come to you with that, or specifically, or perhaps indirectly, have has that happened? So I can't think of a client for reading, but I'll tell you a funny story. Hmm. So the book just came out. Hmm. One of my oldest family friends, hmm. who basically helped me grow up when I was a child and made me do my homework hmm. and all. Sir, Ashton, I can't believe this. I used to huh. force you to read back then. Huh. Never did I think that you would actually write a book. <laughs> you know, yeah. Right? So, me. so it was really funny that that happened. Mm. For me, the reading habit took place about eight years ago. Okay. Um, like most people, I believe that reading was rubbish. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't see the value in reading. I thought reading was only for textbooks when you were in school. Mm-hmm. And when you grew up, who has the time for reading? Yes. Correct. That's the that common the perception. Main, yeah. Main anyway. till i actually sat down and started finishing a book okay. and then i realized that there was so much in this book that i would randomly throw out in a meeting yeah. like in this book i learned this in this board meeting i talk about this mm-hmm. and this and then i said oh wait a minute yeah. there's something here then i started reading more and more mm-hmm. till i realized what i was actually doing when i was reading a book mm-hmm. was i was downloading in a few days mm-hmm. an entire person's life of learning yeah. right and you don't realize that yeah. you don't realize the 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 return on investment on finishing a book mm-hmm. is basically you've taken a person's entire life yeah. their learnings condensed it down and you've gotten it in a few hours yes. and that is the power of re- reading so for me i'm an auditory person which mm-hmm. is why obviously podcasts mm-hmm. and stuff yeah. so i typically break up the books that i'm going to consume during the year and i call it consuming Okay. not just reading uh-huh. because a large part of it is audiobooks yeah right so you get member memberships to various apps that yes. that give you not the condensed version but the full book uh-huh. and what i do is i typically read a book at 2x okay so ta 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 the person is talking really fast okay because i'm looking for those nuggets in that book that i want got to pick it, up got it got it and that's how i typically consume a lot yes. of content last year we finished i think 110 books oh that's a lot and that's a book. lot and the plus with uh, audible or whatever is that you know you kind of uh, you can listen to more stuff mm. and uh, during commutes it always helps that's, that's the best and, part and uh, uh, we always uh, we were talking to shreya earlier as well uh, and she also said that you know kind of uh, i'm open to all formats so mm. why not 
Yeah, I think the fact that we say that you have to read a book mm-hmm. immediately puts a block in people's mind. Yeah. If you say that you can consume a book, mm-hmm. go through a book. Yeah. You know, then you say, ah, I can actually do this. Yeah. I can do this, and then yeah. people become a little yeah. bit more open to it. Tell us what's coming up. Uh, you know, the first book is already out. You are do- doing book signings. We're doing uh, book no, signings this day. Yeah, in Delhi. I, I mean, the podcast will be out later, but you know, doing book signings and other stuff now. You'll be on tours, I suppose. Fingers crossed. Yes. We'll be in, we'll in festivals. <laughs> yes. We'll yes. be winning contests. Which yes. Is power of manifestation. Yeah, yeah. Say these things. Why not? But Why not? Mm. So, what's coming Everybody up? Everybody who well? listens to this is going to be buying yeah. the book. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> that they have to do because, you know, it's. Uh, I'm here to vouch for it. Uh, because even if I started like earlier with my journey, but you know, you need. Although mod- motivation sucks according to you, but <laughs> you know you need that you know sort of uh, push, uh, and that can come in all forms. Yeah, uh, so absolutely. My question was that uh, what's, what's coming up? Yes, what's next? So, so this book is by Harper yeah. Collins, right? Yes. So we did this book, and then uh, my editor Ridhima says that Ashton, the children's team is also interested in mm-hmm. having a conversation mm-hmm. with you. Would you like it? a children's book? Mm-hmm. I said I didn't write an adult's book. I I didn't know how to do that. I don't know how to write children's book. But <laughs> so what? We'll yes. Write. Yes. So got into a call with uh, the children's editor, mm-hmm. and we started mm-hmm. talking about it. And then I went back and promptly, like what I do, mm-hmm. I went and researched oh, yes. six books on how to write to children. Wonderful. Right. Came back mm-hmm. and then said, okay, so this is how we're going to plan the stories. Mm-hmm. And then what we did was we chose six habits for children between the age groups of six and nine. Very and nice. how do we help them form these habits through stories? I'm so, buying one of those. Please, I must. have two daughters, mm. and one of them is six and a half. So there you yeah. go. <laughs> I have to buy them. Perfect, and yeah. she'll grow with this book. Yes. And uh, so the whole thing was how do we have this conversation with the kids without mm-hmm. sounding preachy, without sounding like I'm. Oh, it's a struggle, right? So <laughs> you do it through example. And that's what something I learned from you know working with people mm. that your family never changes by you telling them to change. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. They only change by you by seeing you change. So if True. you can see these people uh, or or the, the characters in the book mm. change because of the habits, mm. there's a chance that they, that they will use you them. You are going to do amazing service, <laughs> and because you know. I don't even want to get into that because I want it for the season two hmm. <laughs> or three. I don't know, that, but because the, you know, it there's is one so very important. cute story in this. Let me finish the story okay. and then I'll uh-huh, tell you please. about it. So the I'm talking to the editor. Mm-hmm. So she said, "Okay, so now we got eight stories. Mm-hmm. We got this and fifty words each. Mm-hmm. So how long will you take, Ashton?" Mm-hmm. So I look at the ceiling and say, "And fifty words should take." Dal dar ke, I said, "You know, two months." <laughs> okay. You know, okay. two months is fine. So she said. Two months. Please take mm. six. Take seven. Take wow. eight. <laughs> wow. It's two months. So yeah. right, finish is writing a book at two months. I'm pretty sure you. So it's done now. Done, 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 done. 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 Now illustrations are happening and oh, all sorts wonderful. of fun things. We haven't announced it, so so this is all top secret on the on your <coughs> podcast. I know. Huh. Yeah. So <laughs> you know because uh, those are my favorite kind of books. I mean, maybe because we have like I have children, but it, they are so wonderful. Yeah. Uh, what else uh, regarding the podcast? Uh, is it going to keep going the same way, or how do you level up? Do you level up? You know, or, or, the way that I yeah. like to level up is to, and mentioned in the book is mm. this constant search for how I can make a small change. Okay, and keep mm. like the kaizen philosophy that we talked yes, about, yes, yes. right? So kaizen yeah. is a simple thing of you look at what you're doing and say, mm. how can I make this one percent better, two percent better, three percent better? Thora sabas. Thora sab. Like you're talking about the videos on Instagram, mm-hmm. and you're saying, "How did you get the quality?" You're saying, mm-hmm. "We started crap, mm-hmm. but then we said that you know what, this light is not right. Can we change this light? You ah. know what, Ashton? Why don't you wear a T-shirt that is not matching the color of the background? Ashton, why don't you yeah. think of this? Yes. To the extent that we just got it, went and bought lots of makeup now, so now you mm-hmm. you'll see yeah. lesser dark circles hopefully in the next <laughs> videos. So it's all interesting to see. I don't want to slowly. take off. I don't want to take <laughs> off my specs. They are right there. <laughs> <laughs> so you you know the all are incremental changes right. and amazing uh we can talk about the habits all day long uh, trust me because this is like i love the book uh the ecosystem that you have and what you're doing is actually great service thank you and uh, thank you for being on the podcast and talking about the book uh so much more and uh, we'll talk about that children's book done for sure uh, we, i'm so happy yeah. that i could come here and do this yes. it was it's it's all credit to you 
because yeah. you know traveling from bombay to delhi it's yeah. not easy you know if but you planned it su- in a, such a beautiful manner yeah. that we are able to do this thank you so much thank you so much and looking forward to oh guys by the way buy the book mm. and uh, you know uh, let ashdin know on uh, social media on uh, he, he's everywhere almost so, so on instagram i'm at ashdin doc yes so just reach out to me send me yeah. dms tell me how you liked it ask yes. questions ha huh. always happy and if you really need to change then the habit doctor of course <laughs> is <laughs> there <laughs> <laughs> at your service <laughs> you know Done. you can always hire him Done. right Thank you so much. Thank you. Lovely talking to you. Same here. Thank you, Ashdin, for featuring on Book Nerds podcast in person, season My one. Pleasure. And uh, thank you for doing this, writing the lovely book, and uh, a little something from us. Oh, yeah. I hope you find a place uh, for this. For and sure. If you are able to make make it to Bombay, you know, if it travels, it, I it, hope it will fit in my suitcase. Awesome. Huh. Great. And I <laughs> we have another thing. So. We have these rusks hmm. from Doon. Wow! These are the best in India, so do try them. Done. And they are pretty healthy, hmm. so <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so do try them. They are from Elora's and uh, amazing. It's not a sponsored thing. We just love them. <laughs> so <laughs> and, uh, these. This is my tomorrow morning coffee. Awesome! Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much. You, yeah.